Hello everyone, JRDL96 is back again with a brand new creepypasta to read to you all. Today we're going to be doing one of my personal favorite creepypastas called I Hate You. And it's kind of special because this is one of the first creepypastas that I'm reading that has a ton of pictures that will be popping up in and here, then here and there related to what I'm saying. So let's get I Hate You rolling. So let's start reading I Hate You. A Mario Creepypasta. This isn't one of those haunted game stories. At no point are you going to hear me claim something within the game that just spoke to me, reacted to my words, or forced me to punch myself repeatedly in the face. No, this isn't about a haunted game or a game doing something impossible or even do something it shouldn't have. This isn't about a glitch or a hidden satanic message and at no time did I phone Nintendo headquarters to have my questions answered with hushed whispers or anguished screams. This story is about a game feature I don't think anyone else has unlocked. That's it. No ghosts, no conspiracies, just a secret that we were all supposed to find, but never did. Something that changes an entire generation's childhood and the very essence of a multi-million, billion dollar franchise. This is what I assume is to be a previously undiscovered alternate ending of Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. In 1996, I received my first computer as a birthday gift. I had been on the internet before, had used computers before, had, but it had always been in school or at a friend's house. This was mine, all mine. I explored the crude prehistoric web at the time with great interest. I downloaded all sorts of pornography and even printed it out, which ap made absolutely no sense. I also pirated media like a madman, music, games, anything. This is where I first discovered Mario World. I never had a Super Nintendo as a little kid, so it was all new to me. I downloaded tons of games along with the SNES emulator, but Mario World was my favorite. For over a decade, the same Mario World ROM was my time-wasting hobby. I played it over and over again, beating the game faster and faster until I began late to lazily explore the world with no particular purpose. Game Genie codes helped immersely, immensely. I could turn off the timer and re relive a particularly entertaining map for an hour as I waited for a download for, or any another number of boring events. It was this, in this manner that I must have been and re-beaten the game thousands upon thousands of times. There was comfort in this obsessive, compulsive behavior of this routine, but all of that was shattered when I saw the blind boo. The blind boo, as I referred to it, was hovering over the exit from the haunted sunken ship level later on in the game. I call it blind because it actually had no visible eyes. It was like someone had made a lazy ROM hack, but I knew from years upon years of experience this was a normal ga game. The blind boo just hung there over the exit pipe, blocking it. I turned my back on it, but it didn't chase me. How could it? It didn't even see me. Then I noticed something else out of sorts. There was a key and keyhole misplaced above the exit. Key and keys and keyholes are such of ways of ending a level in an alternate manner and discovering a secret area. Still, this doesn't belong here, it didn't belong here, and I knew it. For a moment, I considered the fact that I actually broke in a ROM file for overuse. After taking a screenshot specifically to show you all your you Mario Brother fans out there, I picked up the key, opened the door, figuring the game would seize up and had to restart. Instead, it opened up a new path on the map selection screen. Our whirlpool next to Bowser's already creepy head cave thing. I pressed to right arrow and moved onto the whirling drain. Oh god, no. This didn't really strike me as odd, because if you remember familiar with the Mario World game, there's an area called Star Road which that you may note that has similar names. Stuff just like stuff like tubular, awesome, and all the manner dumb words and phrases. Most of the areas were called Vanilla Forest Run and Fo Vanilla Forest Run One and Donut Mountain Three and all with and all that. But there were maps with odd names like that. But what did concern me though was Mario's expression: surprise, shock, fear. I entered a map. Oddly enough, the whirlpool in the middle of the lake began with a standard castle entry animation. Mario walked up to the castle door, looked up, and went in. I could tell it was underwater because the, of the bubbles that peter, periodically emerged from the sprite's mouth and floated up to the top of the screen. 
Inside the castle, it started to look more like I was in fact experiencing a glitch. There was no room to jump, no room to do anything but run left and right. I must have gone right for 10 to 20 minutes just holding the B button and running along at full speed. After a while, I ran into one or two blind blues in the darkness above, then three or four. Then the screen was just full of them. They, they just kind of hung there, doing nothing. They wouldn't chase me if I turned my back, as with the previous Brian Boo. If I made any noise like Mario's jump sound, they would just kind of shudder a little bit, like they heard the sound of Mario's movements, but I couldn't do anything about it. Then, something made me stop and turn the other way. Now, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this map was designed specifically to screw with the player, not because of a giant bleeding bill was hemorrhaging profusely from its face, but it's because it's inescapable. There was literally no way to be av to avoid being killed by it, as you could clearly see above. That is, unless you're like me and you have a game genie cheat on hand. I switched on the code for permanent invisibility. I let the bl bloody bleeding bill chase me for a while, and I was when I was invincible, just to get a good look at the thing. I stopped, and I killed it with my invulnerable touch. Only when I saw a message that hadn't been there before when I passed before. I hate you. That kind of creeped me out. But on the other hand, it was kind of interesting because it meant this was a definitely a map that was supposed to exist. It was some sort of plot element here. Something undiscovered. What does it mean? Who hated me? King Cooper seemed the obvious answer, or maybe it was just the ghosts. When you're in a haunted castle that you found, by the way, of a haunted ship, a bloody looking hate message isn't so unbelievable. I saw it again as I approached some giant booze. I was all I was thankful about that the blind booze ended at this point because the more I watched them shudder, the, the uneasier I felt and more almost empathetic toward them, etc. The thankfulness ended when I turned out turned my back on the giant booze and this happened. Giant booze with faces I hadn't seen before. They always looked mad at being awakened, angry that you were invading their ha haunted houses across Mario World Island. This was different, and they look they looked gre gleeful. Demented. I could see right down their throats, which seemed odd given the lack of detail their mouths usually display. And yes, I'm gonna, of course, I'm going to address the message that you just saw in that picture. Why won't you die? I don't know why. Am I supposed to? Who's asking? I let the giant booze touch me, and they died like the ble bleeding bills, of which I had encountered two. Despite any attempt to scare the player, I knew that being invincible meant invincible no matter what they had thro threw at me. After a while, running down this strange claustrophobic corridor with nothing, no more eventful happenings, I came to a room with an exit pipe. Taking the pipe downward, I came out the other end and dropped into a room full, filled with water. The water made sense, this being a sunken castle beneath a whirlpool and all. I was rewarded for my troubles with a question mark block that released a mushroom for me. I could have easily done this with a cheat code, but the thought had escaped me all as I faced these all new, new and strange sights. The first six creatures I encountered in the underwater portion of the castle were thwomps. Unless you've been living under a rock in, since the mid 80s, you know thwomps are stone-like square creatures that hang from the ceiling and fall whenever you come near. They try to crush you essentially. Well, these swamps lined up in a tight row, drop repeatedly and randomly with no trigger, real tri no any real trigger or any sense of logic. They would just wait and or drop whenever they seemed to feel like it. The, it also looked like these swamps had been very successful for swamps. More cartoony blood. This was getting pretty unusual for the Mario Brothers franchise, which I hadn't recalled seeing blood in it at all. Now, I've seen it used three times, the bloody bills, the messages, and these perpetually smashing, grinding thwomps who were working their victims, whoever they were, into pulp, forever. In the hampering effects of the water, I walked slowly under the, these things, making sure every single one touched me and died. There were almost 30 of them in, the ro in a row. The sight of them mindlessly crushing over and over again just made me hate them with unsettling intensity. What's weird is, is that the blood caused Mario to slide if he, if, he, if, he, if he was on the ice level. After walking through the gauntlet of depravity, the, I swam up into a more open area that was filled with spikes on the floor and ceiling. It was difficult to swim in this manner because, without touching the spikes, but since I was still invincible, I didn't think of much of it. I avoided them more and more for fun than out of any sense of I'd be damaged. 
it stopped being fun very fast though. Now I knew some of the what was going on. The bloody mess with the thwomps were on the movie spattering. It was other Mario's. Past Mario's that had tried to traverse this level and failed. I had to admit this was an excellent touch. Even it was a bit ghoulish, whoever designed this map actually broke the fourth wall and showed you the bloated motion of abortions of the player's own careless treatment of Mario's tiny life. The bodies only floated straight up and down a tiny bit, as if to show the effects of the light current. It was genius, and I couldn't believe I might be the first and only person to ever see this. I toyed with the idea of taking more of the than one of the screenshot that I just presented to you just basically so all of you reading this could enjoy the secret map as much as I had especially this weird little touch but without swimming without kicking or moving in any way the dead Mario started to come at me like torpedoes their faces were made black blank and blue and dead and they moved with astounding speed they angled and positioned and worked all sorts of unique trajectories that left me almost nowhere to move. They continued to come at me and swarming and backing up to try again, and I just couldn't bring myself to let them touch me. I moved with more speed and skill than I ever exerted, frantically trying to keep Mario free of the drowning victims that seemed dead set on rocketing straight into him. When I finally reached the purple exit pipe as you see above, there had been at least 10 of those things right behind, pitching, turning, and trying to chase me. I entered the pipe as fast as I could, thankful that it worked properly and had Mario out of the situation in a heartbeat. The corridor that followed was empty, thankful. It was just a blue underwater hallway of sorts with nothing to avoid or kill. It was a boring, predictable, and predi predictable like the game has been all these years, which brought back a sense of sa safety. At the end of the hallway, I came with a standard pair of doors that you you enter to face a vinyl boss. Beside the doorway though, a mushroom power up. <clears throat> I didn't touch that shit though. Going through the door as you would expect, a typical change of map views occurred and Mario was standing on a, 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 a picturesque bridge over boring lava. Or had it been blood all along? I don't know. When Mario walked over the on, out onto the bridge, however, there was no boss creature. Instead, Mario looked to the side and froze. I couldn't control anymore. He just stood there. Keep looking until you see it. I didn't see it, see it at first, so I don't expect you to notice it right away. If you if you still haven't spotted the thing, look in the third window from the left. FYI, that's not usually there. Mario seemed to regain his composure and looked back and forth slowly, surveying the room. There was still no boss, and I still couldn't control him. So I stopped trying and just watched. This went on and on for what seemed like forever. Nothing happened. Then, a familiar face walked in from the right, dressed in green, tall, and angry. It was Luigi. Mario recurled in horror. horror. It's difficult to say how, without thinking how crazy it sounds, but Mario really reeled back with some sort of terror that is so uncharacteristic for such a peppy, happy, go lucky mascot like him. Then, Luigi spoke. It was all connecting now. The messages scrawled on the walls, I hate you and why won't you die? Luigi, it was Lu Luigi. He's always been Mario's second banana, this player too, if you will, who doesn't get the, get the princess in these earlier games, no matter how identical he is to Mario in skill set and ability and tenaciousness and bravery. At the end of the day, the game is Super Mario Brothers. He is just the brother. How he must have hated Mario. Who among us wouldn't? Think about it. No matter what happens, Mario always comes back. No matter how many corpses he leaves littering the battlefield, he's always there once more to leap and cheer and get all the adoration. And Koopas hadn't worked alone. I didn't know what that meant at first, if anything. But again, you just have to think it through. How exactly does King Cooper consistently succeed in kidnapping the princess? From day one, from the original Mario Brothers onward, it has always been an inside job. Still unable to control the character, I watched Mario simply cower in fear as Luigi left high in the air, as, he, as high he, as he could in Mario 2, the bastard child of the franchise, if you will. He jumped on the pathetic, weeping Mario again and again and again. I was powerless to stop it. When he was done, he seemed to look at Mario's limp body with this overwhelming rage. Then the bridge started to disappear. Soon Mario would be dead. As I looked on, I had an irrational thought. Would it be permanent? 
Within an instant, as Luigi turned to seemingly strike a victory pose, Mar like, he like he'd beaten the level, Mario got awkwardly got to his feet and took him by surprise. Fear and sadness and confusion had given way to anger, and Mario overpowered his brother with little effort. To this day, I am still haunted by the final result of that raffle reprisal. There was the map's title. There was the map's title. None of this was a glitch. None of this. None of it was a mistake. It was. A, wasn't a developer getting back at Nintendo, and it wasn't a ghost haunting a Nintendo cartridge. Please don't say that. It's not a ghost. It was a planned, purposeful part of the Mario Brothers mythos. If you beat the same level X a number of times. A secret part of the world opened, and you learned that from the Mario Brothers in Mario Land, Luigi had secretly been working against you, and was in fact facilitating he the repeated abduction and abuse of the princess. But why? Money? Power? No. It was all there, because he couldn't take out being the one in the spotlight. Not being Mario himself. After Luigi died, well and truly died, Mario just sat on the edge of the bridge and wept. I was forced to watch this for minutes on end before the screen faded to black, and I played the rest of the game the through, the through to see if anything changed, nothing else odd happened. As would you would expect, since this whole ordeal was just supposed to be a part of the full actual story. I couldn't access the whirlpool again. I've seen the events once, and that was all apparently I was apparently allowed. It was back to the game as usual, the same exact game I've, I've played since the 90s, and we probably continue for the, to play for the rest of my days. Well, it was the same, except for the final image. So, what do we? What did I think about this creepy pasta in the first place? It's pretty good, to be honest. And I know there's other creepy pastas that have pictures like Godzilla NES, but might I say, to these pictures. All these pictures seem seem quite legit in my opinion. Now there was one picture that I kind of thought it was kind of fake was the uh, thwomps with the blood spat splatters in this picture, but really it isn't out of place. If you think about it, like it, it's kind of it brings that feeling of like it, it could exist. Like if you beat this game thousands and about thousands of times, like there's like a cheat code that's like a cheat. Uh, a hint, an unlockable, hidden level, like if you beat Super Mario World 100 times or a thousand times, you'll unlock this secret world. Like, it makes more sense, like it makes it more look more real. But if it did exist, like, got, people would probably found the files by now in the, when you looked in the, in the files, for the, in the game files, you probably would have found some level that was undiscovered. But my only thing that I really have a problem with with this creepypasta is not really big, but I've been hearing from like a couple of creepypastas I've, re I've heard of, of Mario creepypastas. There's always a level that with Mario, with the player just running for minutes on end until either A, the level ends, or B, a, a clusterfuck of enemies show up. So it's like, I don't know, it, it probably adds to the feel, the, the fact that it's like a like a way to bring that scare factor to it i'm not sure but if um the other thing i liked was the, the inclusion of luigi being like secretly despising his brother even though that is joked a lot with many gamers it didn't like it was nice to see this included here instead of just being like a throwaway with luigi some being some like crazy boss that's Froze fire and Mario melts and then end of the creepypasta get player is scared by that and never plays games again. No, this was a perfect way to do to make that include Luigi's hatred for Mario and the messages with it kind of like built it up like what who who's the one who's sent making these messages like I hate you who Bowser's probably the obvious why won't you die it makes more sense. So that is pretty much it on this uh, creepypasta of I hate you. Now, uh, I'm not sure what other creepypasta I'm gonna do next. I'm probably thinking of Abandoned by Disney or Mario. So comment down below which one I should do first, Mario or Abandoned by Disney. So start commenting down below, please. 
So if you, what things in this creepy puzzle would you change to make this even better? This is JDL96, and if you liked what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. This is JDL96, and I am out.